to the story. Ah, I see you. You see me too. Ha, good, good. Then it is all working. You, me, this projector. Even if we sometimes falter. There is a war building in Sloane's eyes. One that Zivu Arath will exploit as she did with Osiris. Savathun wore his face, but it was Zivu Arath who took his light. Her whips drove him into a frenzy, lured him into danger, forced Sagira's sacrifice, and left him to die. Now she twists my thoughts into thorns, draws out the faces of the suffering Elixni into my dreams. She whispers that I took pleasure in their pain. I see their eyes as they died by my hands, and they see me. She does not lie. She challenges what you hold as a strength. Osiris's ambition, my protection. Sloane's duty. I have felt how the right word, the right face, can incite one to violence. But I have changed. What she has taken, it will not break me. Sloane is no warrior of glass. But the war within her, even stone crumbles under enough strife. Stay with her, guardian, as I should have with Osiris. We must offer her what support we are able, even if she does not want it. Zane is pleased with the mission's progress, but remains to turn over Sloane's well-being. He recounts how Zivir Wrath goaded Osiris into battle he couldn't win, and how Sagira was slain as a result. Even Sane himself is not immune to the war god's barbs. I felt how the right word, the right face, can incite one to violence, he says with a heavy heart. He urges you to stay beside Sloane and offer her the support she needs. Alright. So essentially, don't let, don't let Zivu f*** with her head. As well as our head, I guess. Now, into the depths, the screen illuminates, revealing an encoded message that unscrambles itself as the projectile recognizes your credential. It reads, this on, uh, start recording. Oh, it is? Okay. Hey, hero. Clear his throat. Hey, hero. You dressed up some mighty fine scrap for me. Pyramid tech that all those rot bags could get their hands on. And I hammered that black gold into shape. Now my rig's running smoother than liquid methane. Sloan and the long girl, their special link is pretty strong. Thanks to you and me, but it is it is missing something to bridge the gap between the big old worm and our little old lady. Thunder guns, respectfully. Thunder guns. Seeing as how you, you're always in the mood to do favors, how about one more? I need something under the table. We need a little something out of both worlds, you dig? One of those traitor ghosts, the bad ones, the hive ones. Scrap them and bring me the fragments. Savage Throne World is chock full of them, but I've got one in mind. Details hit you soon. Was there not any voice acting? Doesn't Drifter normally say these things? Speak to Hawthorne in the tower. Hawthorne is just finishing the quest, not the story. Oh. Friends Hi. Oh my God. Wait, hold on, hold on. Bye. So now defeat Hawthorne, the class word in the extraction law sector. Person? Nobody spool anything. Everybody calm down. Oh, wow. My hammer! Got a battle score. All right, now we return to Sloan. confront the witness you must understand it 
The witnesses' first victims were once like you, struggling for survival, bolstered by hope, until their hopes became reality. They called it the Gardener, their deity of life. It ushered them into a golden age. For eons, they prospered. But their newfound god never spoke to them. It lavished them with gifts, but not with guidance. And though they lived in paradise, they came to crave a greater purpose. They desired meaning, structure, a winnower, to shape the garden. Oh, snap. Their scholars discovered that the gardener shared a connection with another entity among the stars. They called it the Veil, and when they found it, they arrived to claim it. They already knew much about the light, how it could bend the laws of the universe and create life. But they came to realize that it could bring ruin just as easily. The cosmic events it set in motion could wipe out entire civilizations in a heartbeat, without reason. And so they saw the light, not as a source of prosperity, but of unfettered chaos. By studying the veil, they came to know the darkness. A power that was shaped by thought and consciousness. And in the darkness, they found the means to carve away the chaos of existence, to calcify it into a final shape. Oh! She said the thing! Eternal and perfected. They brought the veil back to the gardener in an attempt to strengthen their connection. There, they could reshape reality itself. The gardener would not allow it. And so it fled their world. But they would not be deterred. Having witnessed the truth in the darkness, they used its binding power to merge themselves into the salvation they crave. Oh my god. Thus began the witness's pursuit. Its campaign to impose meaning on a meaningless universe. One that is nearly at its end. Okay, we've got a lot to unpack. We have a lot to unpack. Let's go talk real quick to Sloan, and then we're going to talk about it, okay? Well, now we've heard what Asa had to tell us. We know our enemy better than ever. To think that it all started with the need for purpose. How that need became an obsession. What bothers me most is how much I understand it. This mission, it's my purpose, my reason for being, my guiding light. Without it, I, I'm lost. I don't know who I am or what I'm supposed to do. And that lack of direction, it's, harder to face than a thousand battles. I felt the same about my previous mission when I held the line on Titan. 
And if I'm being honest, it feels like I failed. I survived, but for what reason? What was it all meant to achieve? The only answer I've found is to learn what Asa knows. If I can do that, it will all have been worth it. Our link ended before Asa could explain how to get through the portal. The bond took its toll. But we'll both be ready again soon. When that time has come and gone, then I can feel like I accomplished the mission. Sloan seems to carry the full weight of Asa's revelations on her shoulders, likening the witness obsession with finding purpose to her own internal struggles. She reflects on her own search for purpose and how it led her to cling to the mission at hand. Without it, she painfully admits to you, I'm lost. Sloan questions why she's endured all that she has, and the only answer she can come up with is to see her current mission through. If I can do that, it will all have been worth it. Her connection with Asa ended before she could tell us how to get through the portal. Once they have both recovered, it will be time for one last dive. You never did tell me why you trust the Nine so much. Oh, I don't. Not even a little. I trust Orin. Orin? Long story. The short of it is, I may have had a feeling or two for somebody a long time ago. Somebody that lost themselves along the way. But there's a little piece of her still out there. A sliver. Who still has a feeling or two for the somebody I could be. So I trust her. Because she ain't never steered me wrong. No matter how rotten I was. Because at the end of the day, maybe we gotta put our faith in something other than ourselves. Even if we're too stubborn to admit it. I didn't expect you to put a lot of stock in faith. And I didn't expect you to lose yours and keep moving. Guess we're all full of surprises, ain't we? I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you're being genuine. Oh, I'm always genuine. People just ain't always paying attention. For real, though? Moondust might have given me a push. Thought it'd help. Sounds like familiar advice. Is it, though? Helping. No joke? I think so. Then we have that in common, too. Dude, I think Drifter has become my favorite character. Okay, so Orin, hold on. We're going to unpack some things before we get into the whole witness situation. Is Orin the emissary? Is that who Orin is? Or is emissary someone completely different? Have we seen Orin ever? Orin is the emissary. No fucking way. Are you kidding me? Sure enough, that's Orin. So at one time, Jermaine and Orin used to smash. And he says that he doesn't trust the Nine, but he trusts her. She seemed kind of out of it the last few times we, we talked to her. Orin is the giant face, so you're saying this is Orin? Isn't that the same? When she was a guardian, Drifter's got game for real. I don't trust people when their lips don't move while they're talking, right? That's pretty cool that, that they're actually incorporating the Nine. And I think that the nine, after it's all said and done, the nine are going to play a huge pivotal role either in the final shape or they're going to play a role post final shape. Okay. With that being said, we've got to talk about that cutscene. Okay. So this was the cutscene, the pyramid ships, all of that shit, all of that was actually the first, I guess the first faction or whatever that the gardener slash traveler chose these people. Okay, we used to think we were going to get another alien race. Turns out we're not because conveniently they are actually one inside of this guy. That being the witness. But they they were essentially the first life bearers. Now, where I'm losing track of the narrative here is suddenly they were looking for meaning. Okay, so originally they were looking for purpose and that's that's something that led them somehow to the veil. All right, led them to the veil. The veil revealed to them, or maybe they somehow stumbled upon themselves, that even though the 
the light has blessed them with all these blessings that it could destroy the universe. I don't know how they came to that conclusion, but that's the conclusion they came to. I'm still, I'm trying to wrap my head around this, guys. The other side of things is maybe they just wanted more power. Maybe they just wanted more. I mean, they were like, yo, we've got the lights. I mean, look, you look across the solar system or the galaxy and you see strand and you see stasis. I mean, I want that, right? I, if I'm understanding this correctly, all darkness comes from the veil. Is that right? Is that what I'm getting here? All the, the darkness powers come from the veil, which makes sense considering how we discover strength. And the darkness exists as a means to cut down the light because the light can become too chaotic. And so you need the winner or so or so they think. To calcify it into a final shape. Okay, that's, that's a big point. Hold on. They found the means to carve away the chaos of existence to calcify it into a final shape. All right, so we've got a circle, a sphere. We've got a, looks almost like a radish, but like cut off on the end. I mean, does anybody else, kind of looks like a radish. Got some triangles. Okay, I don't, I don't. We're gonna need myelin on this one. No chaos equals the final shape. Oh. So they're trying to merge the two. They're trying to rid the universe of chaos, that being any chaos. Any chaos, anything that is unpredictable is considered chaos. So they're trying to get rid of the light. So the final shape is nothing. The traveler fled their world. Did it take the light with them? Did it Did it take the light when it fled? Am I understanding this? That's why the bodies, that's why the bodies are piling up. So it took the light. Oh my God. How many races does the traveler have to break up with? The bodies are piling up because they merged into one. Okay, so I just want to point out that even though, yes, it is cool that the witness, that's why he has so many floating heads over him is because he's a, an entire civilization merged into himself. But this is also extremely convenient. This also means that Bungie doesn't have to give us another alien race. Y'all know that, right? We've been expecting a new alien race. We thought we were literally going to be fighting like a, a race called the veil now hold on this may be better this may maybe this is better i don't know on a real note maybe i was the only one that thought that i thought we were going to eventually get a new race if we're not getting a new race then what the hell are all those pyramid ship for the witness just being weird driving around the universe with like thousands of pyramid ships Pyramids are drones. He's just flexing. I mean, he could literally just do it with one ship. Well, you had Rolk. Rolk with his pyramid ship. Yeah. We do have disciples. I'll give you that. Maybe there's a lot of disciples in there. But look, at this rate, all those pyramid ships are just going to be empty. Outside of like the cabal and shit that are just hanging around in there. Or some taken. You know what I mean? And then some tormentors. The pyramids were before the witness cross. Dude, it's, it's, you can literally see them building it. They're building it, guys. So right here. They called it the gardener. Their deity of life. It ushered them into a golden age. For eons, they prospered. But their newfound god never spoke to them. It lavished them with gifts, but not with guidance. Literally pyramid ships right here. How do you guys like this narrative? Like, it's, it's interesting because there's so many parallels between our experience with the Traveler. The Traveler showed up in our lives and in, in Destiny. In the Destiny universe, Traveler blessed us, gave us a golden age. Very similar. Traveler tried to peace out, but Traveler didn't peace out. Traveler's never spoken. So it's my understanding that the Traveler left the first light bearers because the first light bearers tried to merge the veil with the Traveler and that obviously would kill the lights and would kill the Traveler. That's what began the process in which the Traveler was trying to find another set of light bearers that could potentially combat we call it the darkness but it's really the the veil right the people that were originally light bearers that blessed by the veil on a base level the main main thing that we got from this cutscene is that it revealed a lot of things it revealed who the first light bearers were it revealed where these pyramid ships came from it revealed who the witness is we know who the witness is now there's no guessing anymore we know who the witness is but more importantly, we know what the veil is. Not everything, but we know what the veil is. We know more than what we did. Now, my question is, in this process of them going after the Traveler, how did you lose the veil? I know that Nezrak had the veil. Savadun did a switcheroo, killed Nezrak in the process, and hid the veil away. You know, what it makes me think is the witness was like, we got to do the main story and go after the Traveler. And then suddenly he got super distracted by side missions and was like, mm, but actually I think we're going to pick up some disciples. Yeah. 
Gonna give these guys some glaives and shit. Was there a reason for all that? Maybe the witness was like, yo, we need to really level up this time before we take on the light because we couldn't do shit the last time. Go do the veil quest on Iamuna. All right, all right. I'm just confused. Witness shows up, enters a 1v1 with the traveler, starts doing all kinds of finger flicks. Boom. Navy gone. Space Force gone. Turned around, says, oh, actually, we need the motherfucking veil. Since Callus. I would deem arguably the most unreliable of disciples. Callus doesn't really succeed. There's more or less we fucked up. Our ghost throws. Veil vale somehow connects itself to the traveler. Opens triangle on the traveler. Everything goes inside of it. So the veil vale didn't actually need to be close to the traveler. Because they're not actively out there trying to get the veil vale and bring the veil vale physically in contact with the traveler. Veil is a bridge between the physical and the metaphysical. Hmm. So you're saying that the witness and the first light bearers were pissed off because they too have been looking at the traveler for years and years and years and all they wanted to do was go inside i get that i do i completely get it they just wanted to go the fuck inside they wanted to know what the fuck was inside there Can you imagine being like immortal and having all the powers of the universe and you're looking up and you're like i bet some it started off with a little kid asking being like so what the hell is inside I don't know, Timmy. We've never been able to go inside. I bet Timmy was like, you suck, dad. I bet a real dad could go inside. And that is what started it. That's just Geoma a Essie, research log. Siva. Siva oh. is a nanotech fabrication system intended to be used by Exodus ships to rapidly build necessary resources from base matter. Maya calls it Willow Bray's obsession without a hint of self-awareness. But we- Siva. We both see the potential it poses for the future. Each nano machine in Siva's design is an independent, thinking machine, utilizing a distributed quantum network to coordinate movement. Like a mechanical version of Radiolaria. Probably where the design was inspired from, if I'm being honest. But the design can be pushed. We're, uh... We're looking at ways of incorporating components from disabled Vex and erased exomines. If we can insulate the nanomachines from the radiation that killed the exos, maybe... Maybe their deaths won't be for nothing. Wait. Does this really mean I'm part Vex? Well, it's too early to jump to these conclusions, Nimbus. But there does seem to be some connection between the Vex and the Cloud Striders. It may explain why you and the others are able to enter the Vex network without the aid of splices. Can I time travel? <laughs> no, let's hope not. <laughs> all right, so they said Siva just now. Is this setting us up at all for Wrath of the Machine coming to us next season? Huge copium. Hold up. They're talking about Siva right now. Are you sure? I know it's completely separate from the story. Copium off the charts? All right, fine. Fine. It, it's interesting. Okay, there's some there's some questions I want to ask. Do you think we're going to get another subclass in Final Shape? Yes or no? Remember, guys, when adding subclasses to the game, it is always, always has been every other year. Remember, everyone thought we were going to get a subclass in Witch Queen. And we were like, no, we just came off of Beyond Light. And then the other question I want to ask, if you think we are getting a new subclass, will it involve SIVA? Is this lead up at all? Or is this just is this just Bungie's narrative team tying up loose ends? It's just loose ends. All right. All right. Bye. 66% of you say that we are going to be getting a new subclass though in Final Shape. It's quite a few. Guys, that is your narrative this week. There was a lot that got dropped on us. Now that you know who the witness is or what it what it is, what he is, what is what is, I don't know. Now that you know this, do you feel the witness is still just as threatening? Or was the witness more threatening when we had no idea what the hell the witness was? Is the witness more threatening now? Now that you know it's not one person, it is an entire civilization. Some people would say that's more threatening. You have thousands and more mil potentially millions of beings in this one entity who are pissed off because all they wanted to do was go inside the traveler. That's all they wanted. That's all they wanted. Well, they wanted to do some other shit. They wanted to fuck some shit up while inside the traveler, but they mainly wanted to go inside the traveler. That means the witness has a, hold on. The witness has a weakness. 
what is the weakness of the witness now now that we know what we know what is the weakness is it greed we can split them oh my god yeah if we can find a way to split them to like shake them shake them out of each other you know slap that like button like your mama told you right